Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Wednesday night watch party. I'm here with Pastor Robert yeah. Cuencas, and we're going to be continuing the series on how to be happy, yeah. which is it. a major, major topic it is that a we're major in right topic. now. I'm so happy to be with you guys, and so happy you tuned in at home right now. Maybe it's your first time. Like we said earlier, once you watch first, you are now part of the family. We're very honored to be with you guys, maybe at your house. Maybe you're at a workplace right now. Maybe you're driving your vehicle. Maybe driving the truck. We want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm kind of feeling, or you're kind of feeling it for Pastor Marco. Um, he's, this week, he's doing some college shopping. Wow. One of his daughters, yeah, is getting ready for college. And they're actually checking out this week ORU, or Roberts University. Oh, Roberts, shout out, Roberts Yeah, O. Roberts, a little shout out. So we'll see, but he's college shopping. But we want to thank you guys so much for coming. And before we dive into this topic, Christian, lead us in prayer. Uh, maybe somebody tonight, man, they need a breakthrough. Yeah. We just speak breakthrough tonight. Yes. If somebody's hurting tonight, maybe you're broken, we pray that God will come for you here tonight. Yes, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we humbly come before you tonight, God. Yes. And we ask that every word that we hear would be a word that would be assigned to our hearts, yes. to our soul. Yes. Lord, minister to us deeply tonight. Yes. God, we don't want to go through the motions tonight. We don't want things to just go in one ear and out the other. We want to receive and hear a word that changes our lives forever. Yes. Speak to us tonight. We thank you for all those that are tuning in that they would receive from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Man, I'm so excited to jump in this topic. Me and Pastor Marco, we kicked it off last week. How to be happy. That was part one last week. So today, part two. How to be part happy. Part two. Part two. And what we talked about was some of the things we talked about was so what, what does it mean to be happy yeah, and, yeah. and uh, what, what happiness really looks like? Because, Pastor Rob, when I think of happiness, I think there's probably a lot of things in life that could make us happy. Yeah. But oh, what yeah. is God Maybe a brand new car can make you happy. Maybe a brand new car. <laughs> and I think Pastor Marco mentioned it last week too. You know, you could get a new car, you could get a, maybe a new house. It'll make you happy for a while. I mean, if I had a brand new Corvette right now, 2021 Corvette, I'd be a happy cat right now. Well. But now... If you're putting your, or all your happiness, or all your trust in things, that's where we make a mistake. Right, right. Because true happiness can only be found in God. But yeah, let's define, what is happiness? What does it mean? Can you define that, Christian? Yeah, it's, uh, the, uh, happiness is a state of well-being, contentment. Or to be joyful. So it's a yeah. state of well-being. Yeah. What exactly does that mean, Pastor Rob? Yeah, it's, a state it, of well-being. Yeah, it's really looking at your life because being happy, it doesn't come from external things. Ah. Even good or bad. Right. If something bad happens in our life, maybe um, you lose a loved one. Um, you, you lose your job. Your job goes bankrupt. If my happiness is in my job, in my income... I'm not going to be content. Wow. And there's a scripture that the Bible talks about that our eyes are never satisfied. Wow. So we got to be very careful. You know, we, we get a three-bedroom house and our friend gets a four-bedroom house. Wow. The, and we, we want that new house and it's, there's nothing wrong with that. But our, being, being happy is a, is a contentment. Wow. You're content of what you have. You're content because once we start comparing, that's where we get in trouble. Wow. When we're comparing our finances. Right, right. If I compare my finances um, to Bill Gates, well, I'm going to be very sad. sad. <laughs> very sad. <laughs> because he operates in millions and right now I operate in thousands. So be careful that you're not comparing yourself with someone else. Right. Not comparing your job not comparing a degree maybe you, you don't have. And that's what happiness is, is it contentment yeah. that comes from inside that only comes from God. So it'd be safe to say that happiness isn't, isn't something that happens from the outside no. in. No. But something that only takes place from the inside out. Yes, that's exactly right. I can't right. receive happiness from my external conditions. That's exactly Because right. a lot of the things that I get in life... They're temporal. They are temporary. They're temporary. And you just talked about a new car. Yeah. One day it's going to become an old car. Yeah. And we'll no longer be happy with the old car. So <laughs> I can't depend on the outside no. things 
to determine how happy I am on the inside. I need something to take place on the inside. That's right. To let that come out as happiness That's on the exactly outside. That's exactly right. My truck, my truck is getting old right now. It's got it's not getting old. It only has I think seventy eight thousand miles. Oh, it's still new. <laughs> and one of our members, he just got the new um, Jeep truck. Man, he got it lifted. He got the tires, and I was—he sent me pictures of it, which he should have never done. He sent me pictures of it, and I started comparing my truck that has seventy-eight thousand miles, has a few scratches on it. And for a second, I thought, man, maybe I should just trade it and get the new truck. And then I thought, no way, we're trying to go debt-free. My wife would kill me. I can't. I love you, Veronica, if you're watching. But we can't. And once we, once we start to compare um, the things that we have with others, that's where we make the mistake. Right. And Christian, let's cover really quick. God wants us to be happy, doesn't yes. he? Yes, yes. And God wants us to be happy. It says in John 15, verse 11, I have told you these things so that you can have the same joy I have, yeah. so that your joy will be the fullest possible joy. Man, I love that. God is happy, and he also wants us to be happy. Yes. A joy that's overflowing. But I really think the enemy, he has stolen some of our joy. Right. He has stolen right. some of our happiness. Right. If we look at the world as a whole, um, just really quick, just kind of review. What are some of the stats that kind of show us as a whole, as a society, we're really unhappy. Right. Well, you just saw the video. Americans are the unhappiest they have yeah. been in yeah. over 50 years. And some alarming stats are 70% of couples, of married couples, want a divorce. That Man. means that the majority of married couples today want a divorce. They yeah. want their marriage to yeah. end. Yeah. Over 17 million people deal with depression right Man. now. Yeah, I'm going to say this right now. If you're dealing with depression right now, we come against depression yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus we man. come against that spirit of maybe loneliness that you've been yes. experiencing. We come against that spirit of suicide right now yes. in the name yes. of Jesus. God just set someone free right now. Yes. Maybe you're watching and you're depressed. You're feeling lonely. Maybe there's anxiety. We bind that yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. That's what God is doing, Christian. He's, he's removing that depression yes. and giving us a true happiness. Yes, amen. There's some other stats that we see here that close to 800,000, 800,000 yeah. people commit suicide every year yeah. in the U.S. Yeah. alone. Yeah, that's roughly one person every 40 seconds oh my goodness. that's taken their life. And maybe right now you're thinking about suicide. We, we bind that in Jesus' name. Maybe you've had a friend or family that, 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 that they had suicide or maybe at, at the workplace. We've seen it. People are hurting. Yes. They need God's happiness. Right. 50 to 70 million people say they have sleep-related problems. Man. And over 18 million people last year had plastic surgery done to make themselves Feel, feel better. Feel better. That's yeah. exactly right. 19.7 million people battle drug addiction. Yeah. And this is all related to happiness. That's exactly right. And people are struggling right now. And maybe you're struggling. By the end of this, this teaching, God is going to set you free. You're going to receive happiness. You know, before we jump into happiness really quick, Christian, um, I want to go over some things. Where won't you find happiness? Mm, that's good. Where don't you find happiness? You're not going to find happiness in the world. Right. We're not going to find happiness in the world. We're not going to find happiness in possessions. Right. We said earlier, possessions can make you happy for a sec. Right. They can make you happy for a month. Even sin. The Bible says that sin is pleasurable for a season. Even sin can be pleasurable at the end is destruction. Right. The end is misery. So we're not going to find true happiness in possessions. We're not going to find true happiness in the things of this world. Our happiness comes from God. Wow. So true and lasting happiness can only be found in God. That's right. Can That's only right. make us uh, happier when we find that in God. That's exactly right. There's a verse here, Psalms 4, 6 through 7, that says, yeah. Many people say, I wish I could enjoy the good life. Lord, give us some of those blessings. But you have made me happier yes. than they will ever be with yes. all of their uh, possessions, what they have. Yeah, I love that. I love the statement that we put there. God can make us happier uh. than anyone or anything this world has to offer. Amen. 
God can make us happier than anything, than anyone. Maybe you're not happy tonight. Could it be that you've put your trust, you've put your faith in the things of this world? And really, Christian, people will let us down. Things will let us down. But God will never let us down. People will leave us. But God will never leave us or abandon us. Even in our worst condition, God is right there to love us. So we're not going to find happiness in the things of the world. We're not going to find happiness in possessions. But Christian, let's jump into this scripture. And this is a little bit of review. Can you read Matthew chapter 5, 1 through 10? Again, this is the, the, the first sermon that Jesus ever preached. The Beatitudes. He's teaching us the attitudes that we need to receive happiness. This is what it says. Matthew chapter 5, let's look from verse 1 through 10. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered around him and he began to teach them. This is what he taught them. Wow. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. Hmm. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Yes. Happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised. Happy are those yes. whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. Yes. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are, th- are the pure in heart. They will see God. Yes. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. And happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Man. So this is Jesus ministering his first teaching, his first preaching. And to answer again, does God want us happy? Yes. Yes. Of all the sermons he could have picked, all the topics, he chose this one first. The Beatitudes. Attitudes that lead to happiness. So I want to review just really quick number one. Nine attitudes or mindsets that lead to a happy life. So if you're taking notes, jot that down. Nine attitudes or mindsets that lead to a happy life. Attitude mindset number one, I need God. Once we realize that we need God, that's where joy begins to happen. That's where the peace of God comes in. Until we realize that we need God, we remain lost and we remain empty. I'm going to say that again. Until we realize that we need God, you and I will remain lost and empty. Do you remember, Chris, maybe before you got saved, before you surrendered to God, how empty and how lost did you feel? Yeah, It's just a place of, there's there's no sense of hope that the world can give you. No. Especially when you're in a really, really dark place in your right. life. Yeah. Where it seems like things are falling apart. Maybe things are going good and you have that temporal happiness. You're not really thinking about it. Right. But when you hit that rock bottom place and, and you don't, and before God, that hopeless place, it's, it's dark, it's depressing, and yeah. you feel lost. That's exactly but right. But that's why Jesus gave us this word yes. so that we can experience the blessing that he gives yes. us in I his remember, life. You know, I was raised in church, and uh, my mom took me to church every week. But I still didn't surrender everything to God. I thought, you know, when you're growing up, teenager, even a young adult, you think you could conquer the world. You think you have all. I thought I knew all the answers at 13 years old. Yep, yep. <laughs> Was that you that. too? Yep. That's all of us. We think, we think we don't need God. That's why the Bible even says for a rich man or for a rich person, it's going to be hard for them to find God. Why? They think they don't need God. Wow. They think they can just buy this next thing and buy that and they don't need God. And true happiness only comes when we realize that we are spiritually poor. And true happiness only comes from God. I love the scripture in Philippians 4.4. Can you read that? It says, always be filled with joy in the Lord. I will say it again. Be filled with joy. Yes. Our joy is found where? In the Lord. And again, this is just a little bit of review. Where does our joy come from? First, it comes from realizing that we need God. I love this. We, we even said this last week. For example, maybe you're trying to find happiness in money. Uh-huh. 
We, we read this last week, but I love, these, I love this statement. Maybe you're trying to find happiness in money. Money can buy a house, but it can't buy you a home. Wow. You can, you can buy a house, but not necessarily is there a happy home going involved. Right. Right. Money can buy you medicine, but it cannot buy you good health. Wow. Because true happiness, happy, you can't buy love. Right, right. You cannot buy love. Only God could give us love and show us how to love. Only when we realize, and I love this statement, when we realize we are spiritually bankrupt, right. that's when God comes in. Right. When we realize we are spiritually bankrupt. Right. Right. Question is tonight, are you spiritually bankrupt? Right. Are you poor in spirit? Because once you realize you need God, God shows up. Yes. And begins to reveal himself to you. And his freedom is there. His deliverance is there. His breakthrough is there. I need God. I need God every day. Every decision that I make, I need God. If you're a business person, man, trying to run a business now in the 21st century, trying to run a business during COVID, man, you need supernatural wisdom from God. And maybe you're at your house right now. Just say that. I need God. I need you, God. I need you with my family to raise kids. I need God to raise children. Pretty soon, maybe you guys will have some little ones running around, Christian. Never know. To be continued. (laughs) (laughs) Pastor Robert, what is attitude or mindset number two? Here we go. Mindset number two. Here we go. Let's get into some new stuff. Mindset number two. I've sinned and I need to repent. Wow. I've sinned. And I need to repent. This means we need to mourn over our sinful ways. We need to mourn over our compromises. And the scripture is found in Matthew 5, 4. Yeah, and um, we're going to read, check this out from the Amplified Version. It says, blessed or forgiven, refreshed by God's grace, are those who mourn over their sins and repent. For they will be comforted. When the burden of sin is lifted. I love that. Blessed, forgiven, refreshed by God's grace are those who mourn over their sins. So the second mindset has to do with mourning over our sins. Wow. And finally get into a place where we say, I've sinned. Right. And I need to repent. Wow. I love this statement. Forgiven people are the happiest people. Yes. I love that. Forgiven people are the happiest people. See, until the burden of sin is right. lifted off of us, man, we're tormented. Right. I remember when I was addicted to sin and just making mistakes and not repenting. Right. Man, there's a burden, but there's a joy. There's a release yes. when we come clean. That's right. There's a release when we repent. That's right. There's a joy that's unexplainable that's right. when we finally that's Say, right. God, I've sinned, and I need to repent. That's right. And it's not only for the non-believer. Yes, we need to repent, but it's us. It's every day. Repentance is a lifestyle. That's right. I'm training my kids now before we go to bed. Hey, before we go to bed, let's get things right with God. Let's repent of the things we've done wrong. Because once we lift off the burden of sin, man, joy. I'm telling you, some of us are burdened. Right. There's no joy, there's no peace, and it could be, maybe, we have not repented of sin. I love this scripture in Psalms 32, 1 through 5. It really shows us what happens when we repent. This is what it says. Psalms 32, 1. It says, happy are those whose sins are forgiven. Happy, wow. Whose wrongs are pardoned. Happy is the one whom the Lord does not accuse of doing wrong. And who is free from all deceit. Yes. When I did not confess my sins, I was worn out from crying all day long. Man, isn't that what happens? Right. When we don't repent of our sins, man, you just wore out. You got this. The enemy will bring condemnation. See, there's no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. But the enemy will bring condemnation. He'll accuse us. Right. Man, you did this. You did that. He'll, he'll bring all. And it's just a weight. And how we get rid of that weight right. is saying, God, I repent of my right. sins. What I said was wrong. Those thoughts that I had, God, 
They were wrong, and I let them go. Yes. But, man, sin, unrepentant sin will wear you out. Right. It goes on to say, verse man. 4, day and night you punished me, Lord. Oh. My strength was completely drained wow, your as is moisture strange. is dried up by the summer heat. Then I confess my sins to you. Wow. I did not conceal my wrongdoings. I decided, I love that word, yes, I, decided I decided to confess them to you. And you forgave That's, all my sins. There must be a decision today that we confess our sins right. to the Lord. Right. There must be a decision today. You know, I wonder, maybe you're watching today. Maybe um, you're hiding something wow. that you need to confess. If you're hiding something, I've been there. Yep. Man, your strength is drained. You're wore out. You're trying to put a mask on in front of people. You're trying to put another mask on when you get to church. You put another mask on when you get home because we haven't dealt with it. I want you to ask yourself that tonight. Is there something that you're hiding? Is there, is there something you need to confess? I remember when I was in college, even high school. In high school, I got introduced um, to some just lustful things. And... It began to just take over my mind. I began to look at inappropriate magazines and just videos. Man, I was messed up. And really the hardest thing during that time, even when I was struggling with this, with this lust, I was already involved in ministry. Yeah. I was living in Florida and I was helping out the youth pastor. And I remember at times just praying over teenagers. It almost made me sick inside because I was struggling with the same things they were doing. Mm. And I wasn't confessing it. Right. I wasn't releasing it. I was trying to hide it from my mom. I was trying to hide it from my, my youth leaders there, my mentors, my coaches. But there's one thing. We can't hide sin from God. Right. And I remember I finally decided. I went on my knees and I said, God, I'm done with yeah. this. Yeah. I release these lustful thoughts. Right. I confess my sins to you. And man, Christian, it's like a weight just got lifted yeah, off of me. Awesome. I felt so free. And I went to my leaders and I began to share with them. I said, man, this is what I'm struggling with. I prayed last night. Can you guys pray with me? I had to be honest with my leaders. Yeah. And I had to confess. Because when we're hiding it and trying to hold on to things, it's miserable. Yeah. We've been there. And maybe you're there right now. Right. I'm kind of sharing my, my dirty yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 my turn. How about you share my some turn. of your stuff? Yeah. I, <laughs> I remember, I remember there's a time I was sitting in a service and Pastor Marco was preaching that night and uh, the word just convicted me so heavy. Was it like a spotlight just going to you oh, and Pastor Marco? it was like the, everyone left the room and Pastor Marco was like looking right at my life and telling oh, me everything I was gosh. doing. You ever had those moments, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Like, Pastor, who told you my business? Yes. So in that moment, I remember I re immediately received conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I decided, and that was the important part, Man, I, I decided that. in that moment that I was going to speak to my leader, yeah. which was Pastor Marco. And, and I could have made the decision, no, 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 I'm good, I'm, I'm good, I prayed, or I'm all right. So you went to your leader too? You went to God? I went to my went, God, okay, go and okay. I went to my leader. So I talked to him after service, and... I had been harboring unforgiveness yeah. for somebody. And I went to him and, and I confessed that and so many other sins that I hadn't confessed. And, yeah. and I felt like in that moment, it was a great place for me to just be free from things Man. that I had been harboring inside. Man. And as soon as I finally confessed it and just let it out of my mouth, yeah. I was able to receive prayer and major deliverance in my life. Man. I got set free from so many things. And let me tell you, Man. the next day I woke up with like like 100 pounds lighter. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I felt like a weight was totally lifted off my back. That's right, that's I was able right. to walk with joy and with yes. peace. I was able to see the world in a different way, hear God in a yes. different way, and experience his love Amen. in a brand new way. And it was only because I was too afraid to take the step and decide to confess. But right. once I did, it was the best decision I could have made. I want you to, we have the scripture. I don't know if the media team has it. I, James chapter 5, yeah. verse 16, because I see something in common even as we're talking um, we confess to God, that's great, that's number one, we go to God. But I don't know about you, just thinking about it even now, every deep sin that I've ever been involved in, anything that's kind of like a stronghold right. that I've had in my life, I go to God, 
but then also I have to go to a leader. Mm -hmm. I had to go to a pastor because in that moment you received deliverance. Right. You can get delivered by yourself, but a lot of times when we're dealing with those deep issues, we need to confess them. Right. And you mentioned something earlier that was powerful. Until we confess it right. to someone or we confess it to a leader, you said something about we don't have a testimony. Right, it's true. That was a great statement. Right, it, it, it's like it's harder to testify about something <laughs> and overcome it through your testimony when I don't confess it to somebody. Wow, we good. avoid using our testimony, uh, about, avoid Showing what God did in our life right. and overcoming sin exactly when we right. haven't confessed it to yeah. a pastor or to a leader yeah. or to a P12 leader. That's good. And it limits our testimony. It does. It limits our influence. But when we confess, it actually opens up an yeah. opportunity for us to have authority over that That's sin right. and to be able to overcome that with our testimony. The Bible we says overcome we overcome by the blood, by the blood of, the of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Testimony says so overcoming yes. when you begin to share. So James 5.16 tells us about this, how sometimes we need to confess to one another. Can you read James 5.16? Yeah, James 5.16 says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Wow. So God can heal you. When a believing person prays, Great things happen. And so we confess to God. Now we confess to one another. Maybe you're watching today. What is it? What sin? What stronghold do we need to confess? Maybe with the power of 12 leader. Maybe you come Sunday. Maybe it's at the altar. Maybe you call the church. You're talking to someone. Find a leader. Find a, Maybe it's a mom. Maybe it's a dad. One of the... When my mom was alive, man, I, I, there were times when I would do stuff and I would just get the, call your mama and tell her. I was like, I don't want to call mama. Because it's now we, gotta, we open ourselves up and we're thinking, oh my gosh, what are they going to say? Right. What are they going to think? Well, I, don't want, I don't want people to know my business. The truth will always set you free. Confess it. Let it go. I love this other scripture we have, um, Proverbs 28, 13. So again, how to receive joy. It's a mindset that we say, I've sinned and I need to repent. I love the scripture, Proverbs 28, 13. It says, you will never succeed in life if you try to hide your sins. Wow. Confess them and give them up. Wow, I give love Give them that. up. Then God will show mercy to you. I love that. We receive success in life when we finally confess our sins and God shows mercy. Yeah. God is a loving God. It doesn't matter what you've done. He's not here to judge you today. You're thinking, man, I got that secret thing that I'm doing. He's right. not judging. He's loving you. Right. For love covers a multitude of sin. I thank God that he sent his son Jesus yes. on the cross to die for us. Yes. So we can go to him and say, God, I've made a mistake. I confess my sins and I'm done with it. Wow, yes. I love that. This next statement um, we need, here's another thing. We need to develop a godly sorrow. Right. We need to develop, still talking about confessing and mourning over our sins. We need to develop a godly sorrow. And I love this scripture, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10. It says this, for, for the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience. So we're actually talking about different sorrows yes. now. Yeah. But the kind of sorrow that God wants us to experience, yes. it's not a worldly sorrow. No. It says this, it leads us away from uh, sin and results in salvation. So that's a godly sorrow. That's a godly it sorrow. It leads us to repentance. What does it say? Leads us away leads from us sin. Leads us away from our sin. There's a difference between a godly sorrow and worldly. Worldly sorrow is basically this, I'm just sorry that I got caught. Mm. But there's no life change. There's not a mindset change. Repentance is this, it's a change of thought thinking. Right. Write that down. It's out in your notes. Repenting is a change of thinking. When we have this godly sorrow, we have a change of thinking. I used to go to the club, but I don't go to the club anymore. I used to get involved in gossip, but it's a change of thinking now. I don't gossip anymore. I don't talk about my brother or my... There's a change of thinking. I used to have sex before marriage, but there's a change of thinking. I keep my body holy now. My body is a temple of God. I love right, that. It right. causes us 
to go away from our sin. Right. I love and that. And then it goes on to say, there's no regret for that kind of sorrow. Yeah, I love I, that. I, I've, never, wow. I've never confessed a sin or came clean or been honest about something and later regretted it. Never. It, it, I, I don't regret being free. No way. I don't regret the weight being lifted off no of my way. back. I do not regret being able to sleep with no peace and, and experiencing God's mercy and his love and his joy. Man. I don't re regret walking with freedom. No way. I don't regret leaving my chains at the no altar. Way. I don't regret that. I, I thank God that God has given us opportunity to repent. Yes. So it says there's no regret for that kind of sorrow. Love it. But worldly sorrow. There it goes. Which lacks repentance. Lacks repentance. In other words, change it, of lacks a, it lacks us uh, being truly sorry That's to exactly God. That's exactly right. And yeah. it, lacks, uh, it lacks the decision to yeah. turn away. Yeah. It says that kind of sorrow results in spiritual death. Man, spiritual death, separation from God, it, it leads to destruction. You know, talking about repentance, Christian, and repentance is going to make us happy when we mourn over our sins. Right. We're talking about repenting. There's a scripture in James chapter 4, yeah. I think it's 8 through 10. Right. It kind of shows us what repentance should look like. Right. This scripture really shows us. What mourning over our sin should look like. Can you read that scripture? Powerful scripture. This is John 4, 8 through 10. This is or in James. The, is it James? I'm sorry, yeah, yeah James. James. James, this is in the Phillips version. It says, listen to this. I want you to hear this. Come close to God. Yes. And he will come close to you. Yes. Realize that you have sinned. Mm. And get your hands clean again. Yes. Realize that you have been disloyal. Yes. And get your hearts made true once more. Man, I love that. As you come close to God, you should be deeply sorry. You should be grieved. You should even be in tears. Your laughter will have to become mourning. Wow. Your high spirits will have to become heartfelt dejection. Yes, God. You will have to feel very small in the sight of God Man. before he will set you on your feet once more. Man. This describes like just, uh, you know, that word mourning, if you even looked up just Webster's Dictionary, it's a deep grief. Right. I, I really believe, and I've been there before, and we've, we've lost the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Right. We've lost the fear of God. How do you lose conviction of the Holy Spirit? It's what we're talking about. All it takes is one sin that you don't repent of. I just said a white lie, not a big deal. Mm. Not a big deal, well, lying is lying. All it takes is a little white lie. We don't repent because what happens with sin a lot of times, we could do something wrong, we could do something not according to the word, and sometimes we don't see the consequences right away. Right. So we think we're getting away with it. Right. We think... We're fooling God. Or we could get to the point we almost take advantage of his grace, wow. of his mercy. I've been there. Where I, I'm just going to sin. I know God will forgive me later. Wow. Wow. I'll just say I'm sorry. I'll go to the altar. I'll go in my room. And I'll just ask forgiveness. He'll forgive me. And if we're not careful, we're losing that godly sorrow. Mm. I'm getting to the point where every day I'm asking, Holy Spirit, bring conviction upon my life. There'll be times where a conversation doesn't go right. Maybe I was short with someone. Maybe I was rude with someone. Man, I can't sleep for like three nights until I get it right. Because I'm just allowing the Holy Spirit to bring conviction. So true happiness, man, it looks like we're only going to be able to cover this one again, yeah. just one. Yeah. So number one mindset is I need God. Right. Have you realized that you are spiritually bankrupt? Do you need God? And second mindset we're talking about today, I've sinned and I need right. to repent. And once we let it go, man, there's a joy. There's people listening right now, Christian, at home. Yeah. You're driving your car. You're at a workplace. Maybe you're in a room. You're in a watch party right now. God is speaking to you. Yes. What is that thing? What is that sin we need to repent of? Maybe what is that thing, that sin that we're hiding? And God is saying, no more hiding it. 
Let's just confess it. And happy are those. Happy are those whose sins are forgiven. Christian, maybe you could lead us in a prayer tonight. People watching, a, a prayer of repentance. A prayer of just letting things go. Because once you release it, man, there's such a weight that's lifted off of us. You know, and this is a message. I don't want anyone to feel like this is, you know, a message for someone else. This is a message for yes. me too. Yes, it is for This me. is a message for all of us. It Leaders, yes. watch party hosts. Yes. You're watching for the first time tonight. Yes. This is a message for us. Yes. Where God is inviting us to walk in greater yes. blessing and happiness. When we repent, we confess, and we allow that weight to just be lifted off yes, of us. Yeah. It's not a weight we were meant to carry. No way. It's a weight that's meant to be on the cross. Yes, Father. Your sin is not meant to be kept on you. Yes. It belongs on the cross. Yes, Father. Would you allow Jesus to take that sin yes, God. and put it on the cross yes, where it belongs? It go, Would you allow him just to speak to you right now? Just close your eyes wherever you're at. We let it go, Jesus. Bow your heads. Right now, you may be feeling the, what's called the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we let it go. All that is is just, it's that inner feeling that makes you feel like, I need to let this go. Yes, God. I need to be honest. With God, I need to be honest with somebody. Yeah. I'm telling you right now that there is happiness. God. There's peace on the other side of that hill. Yes. Make a decision tonight to confess. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And repeat this after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I confess. I confess. That I've sinned against you. That I've sinned against you. I admit. I admit. That I've done wrong. That I have done wrong. In your eyes. In your eyes. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive me. Forgive me, Lord. Yes, Father. I know yes, God. I know God. That you love me. That you love me. And that's why you allow me. That's why you allow me. The opportunity. The opportunity. To repent. To repent. So I turn away. So I turn away. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you died on the cross. And you rose from the dead. And you rose from the dead. So I can be forgiven. So that I can be forgiven. And set free. And set free. From the power of sin. From the power of sin. I receive. I receive. The power. The power. Of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. I receive. I receive. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. A new, life a new life and a new start. And a new start. Thank, you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus, for washing me clean for washing and making me, me brand new. Making me brand In, new. Jesus name, In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 You might have felt right now just a weight being lifted off. And maybe even after this prayer, maybe you got to talk to a power of 12 leader. Talk to a leader and just let it go. Say, man, I've been struggling here. These are the things I've been dealing with and continue to let it go. Then we're going to go into another song of worship right. and we only covered one of them again today. Next week we'll talk about happy are those who are humble. In other words, for humble is meek. They will receive what God has promised. And then we could get into happy are those who greatest desires to do what God right. requires. So every week we'll be jumping into different scriptures on again the attitudes and mindsets that lead to happiness. The worship team right now is going to go into another song of worship. Use this song as an opportunity right there in your home. Maybe you're a father there, a mother, you got your kids there. Maybe it's a husband and wife. Maybe you're by yourself watching. Use this time to worship. You could pray for one another. You could lay hands on someone. If somebody needs a healing, Right there in the watch party, begin to pray for a healing. Maybe it's what we talked about. Maybe you're saying, man, maybe you're a teenager watching, a young adult, husband or wife. You're saying, man, I need to confess something right now. I got to get something off my chest. Use this time for prayer and let God touch you right there in your homes. Let's worship God and let's pray right there in your house.
Jesus. Our hearts are open. Yes, there is no bondage. We speak freedom right now in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for delivering us, for saving us tonight. If you said that prayer with Christian a little bit earlier and you've never said that prayer, or maybe you said that prayer, you rededicated your life and you're saying, man, what's my next step? What are some of the classes maybe you guys offer here? What, what do I do next? Really simple, just go to igotsaved.com. igotsaved.com, fill out the info. We'll call you up, we'll let you know what's next. And really what's next here at The Way is starting at The Way classes. Never been baptized, sign up for baptism. And we can't wait for Sunday. We're going to have an amazing service. Um, we're finally going to get into Gideon. How God called Gideon to reach the one, to reach someone that's going to be powerful. Don't miss it. We love you guys. Remember, if God is for you, who could come against you? Have a great week. Make sure to sign up for Marriage Challenge. Jump on the app. Sign up. Limited space available. We love you guys. Happier those that mourn over their sins. God bless you guys.